We'd like to thank Audible for supporting PBS. It can happen a million ways. Maybe you lost your job and had to choose a utility charge to ignore. Or maybe you've developed a serious health condition and now you're stuck with a whopping medical bill. Or maybe you just forgot to change your address and a bill went to the wrong place. At some point in your life, you might find yourself having descended to another world known as debt collections. And you wouldn't be alone down there. In 2019, the CFPB reported that more than one in four Americans have a debt that's currently in third-party collections. But there are actually different levels to this world with different opponents and obstacles to face that each require a different set of strategies to make it through with your dignity and finances intact. So today, we're going to be your personal guides to the four, four levels, levels of, of debt, debt collection. This whole situation probably began when you passed the 30 days late mark on paying a debt or a bill. At which point, they probably sent you a notification, which you may have ignored or missed. Welcome, you've now entered the first level of the debt collections process. Technically, your lender can report this late payment to the credit bureau right after you pass the 30 day mark, but many will continue to give you grace for an extra 30 days. This is a critical juncture where you have the power to stop your descent. Believe it or not, your lender wants to have a good relationship with you. Fighting you by putting your debt further down the levels of collections is costly, so being proactive and upfront with them is the best way to go. Ideally, the moment it becomes clear you can't pay a bill when it's due, call them, explain the situation. You might be able to get on a plan and prevent yourself from sinking lower. Once you pass the 60 day mark, things start to heat up. You might get one of those notifications on your phone from a credit tracking service telling you your credit score has dropped by as much as 100 points. That's also when you'll start getting calls and more letters trying to collect the payment. Let's think of this as level 1.5 because during this time, you're most likely dealing with the original creditor. And while your credit may have taken a hit, there's still a very high chance you can negotiate directly with them. Once you get to the point where your debt is 90 to 180 days late, you have crossed the river Styx and are solidly in the second ring of collections hell. The original lender has written you off as a lost cause and charged off your account. If it hasn't already, your credit score is going to tank and you'll probably start getting some aggressive phone calls from new people. This is because many lenders will bring in a third party collections agency as a middleman. Their aim is to get you to pay as much as possible as fast as possible. It's not uncommon for the person on the phone to earn a commission between 25 to 45% of the amount you pay, hence the urgency you might sense in their voice. But remember, it's not too late to negotiate your balance down. Experts say it's not uncommon to end up settling for 30 to 70% of the original balance. So start your negotiations with a small amount and see how flexible they are. Also, here's a pro tip call them at the end of the month. Most collectors work on monthly quotas, and they may be more amenable to a deeper discount as the end of the month approaches. But don't make them any offers until you have received a debt validation letter. Collectors are required to send these within five days of initially contacting you, and it will detail what the debt is and how much you owe. Make sure to check these against your records. You don't wanna pay a debt that isn't yours or to a company that can't actually prove they own it. You also don't have to go through this process alone. Once you're past that first level of collections, reaching out to a nonprofit debt counselor can be an incredibly helpful move, especially if you have links with multiple lenders. These situations can get very tricky and the rules can change depending on your specific situation. It might not even cost you anything. All agencies certified by the National Foundation for Credit Counseling will offer free credit counseling sessions. After the 180 day mark, the bank, medical provider, or credit card company may give up trying to collect through the collections agency. Phew, you're off the hook now, right? Probably not. Instead of writing off your debt as a total loss, they will often sell your debt to a debt buyer, hoping to make a little of their money back. This means you've arrived at the third and often the final level, the realm of debt buyers. These companies will bid to buy bundles of bad debts at a steep discount. For example, if you had a thousand dollar debt that was sold to a debt buyer, odds are they only paid 20 or 30 bucks for it. Debt buyers only expect to collect three to 6% of the balances they own. 
So keep that in mind as you negotiate. Again, lowball first and see where it gets you. And be sure not to give them personal information up front. Let them tell you what they have on you. This can protect you against shady collectors and con artists. You also need to be careful about reviving an old debt that's past the statute of limitations. Collectors have a limited window of time in which to sue you for your debts depending on the state. Here in Texas, it's only four years from the date of your last payment. So if a collector can convince you to make a payment on a debt that's three years and 11 months old, the clock resets. So I know what you must be thinking. Wow, I can just wait it out a few years and my debt will go away. And yes, some old debts will fall off your credit report after seven years. But remember, your credit score and history are constantly being checked by utilities, rental companies, and even employers. So unless you plan on not making a single move in living or employment situation for the next seven whole years, you should attempt to deal with it. Debt buyers can often be the toughest and most aggressive in their communication. Be sure to review the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act so that you know what they are and aren't allowed to do. Calling you late at night, contacting family members, or threatening you with arrest are all strictly forbidden. Debtor's prison is not a thing anymore. You cannot be thrown in jail for a debt. And if you ask them to stop calling you at work, they're supposed to respect that request. If a collector is violating these rules, you are entitled to submit a complaint to the CFPB website and your state's attorney general's office. Sometimes though, instead of ending up with a debt buyer, the original creditor can choose to take you to court. Since they'll have to pay an attorney, they're unlikely to do this over small balances. But if you ever do find yourself on the receiving end of a summons, do not ignore it. Not showing up to court means that the other side wins automatically and will have the right to do things like garnish your wages or seize assets. At this point, it's best to seek professional legal advice. There are organizations that will provide legal aid to debtors for little to no cost. Again, speaking with a local debt counselor is a good place to start. As you can see, the landscape of collections changes depending on the level you find yourself in. So it's important to adjust your tactics accordingly. And remember, the lower you go, the more likely collectors will benefit from preying on feelings of shame and confusion. Don't give them the upper hand by losing your temper, playing loose with the facts, or being afraid to ask for help. That way you can beat the heat and claw your way back to the surface. And, and that's, that's our, our two cents. cents. We'd like to thank Audible for supporting PBS. Audible's selection of audiobooks includes Audible Originals, audio titles created by storytellers from around the literary world. For example, Thicker Than Water by Tyler Schultz gives listeners a whistleblower's account of the Theranos saga, one of the biggest financial scams in modern history. And while we're at home, a good night's sleep is essential for keeping our mind and bodies strong. But it's not always an easy thing to get, especially now. Audible created audio experiences that let you meditate with Diddy, drift off with Nick Jonas, bathe in sound with Sarah Oster, and more. You don't need to be a member to access Audible Sleep. To learn more, visit audible.com forward slash two cents or text two cents to 500 500. Thanks to our patrons for keeping Two Cents financially healthy. Click the link in the description to become a Two Cents patron. Have you ever dealt with a debt in collections? Tell us about it in the comments.